What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're going to be talking about creating spirals in Revit. I know, it might sound a little bit silly but I thought, well, how do I create a spiral in Revit? How do I create a kind of a spring in Revit? Uh, not the spring, but this a spring, you know? Uh, so I thought, how do you do something like that? Uh, so I explored the topic a little bit and it's fairly straightforward, but it does uh, include something that I really like and something that's really exciting for me when it comes to working in Revit, and that is the adaptive component. So uh, we're going to be using an adaptive component inside of Revit to create this, uh, and uh, I, I find those really amazing, really powerful. So if you're interested in adaptive components, I actually have a whole course that they have created a while back, and you can find it on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just uh, just below the video in the description so check it out if you're interested uh, also there I have all of my other Revit courses over a hundred hours of content so if you're interested check it out uh, also before we start make sure to subscribe I make useful Revit tutorials each week and also make sure to like and share this video helps me out a lot and helps promote the video to other people that might want to see it okay so without any further ado let's jump straight into Revit and here we are in Revit. So let us get started immediately by going to models, then we're going to go to new. And for a template file, I'm just going to be using my architecture design template. Now, if you want to check out my templates, you can find both of them on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the third link in the description. Uh, there you can find all of my Revit content. Okay, so here we are in Revit and let's get started uh, simply by going uh, to the uh, project browser. Let's go to the 3D view. Uh, this is where we're going to be doing all of our work. And uh, now because this spiral is something that's uh, that cannot be <laughs> achieved very easily using uh, the, the basic build tools in Revit, uh, because of that we have to go to the uh, masking inside tab and then uh, go to the masking environment in order to create this. Uh, now I'm just going to turn the show mass on so we can see what we're doing and then I'm just going to go to in place mass uh, for the name you can name it or you can leave it as mass as mass one I'm fine with that so I'm just going to click OK and here we are uh, so to create this spiral uh, what I'm going to do is uh, go here to the circle tool and just go with the circle tool and place a single circle here in the middle so I'm just going to create a I know like a 300 uh, centimeter diameter circle and uh, that's it for the beginning <laughs> hit the escape key a, a couple of times and then select that circle and go here to the form panel go to create form and it's just going to create either a cylinder or a ball uh, we want a cylinder so let's create that I can extend it a little bit perhaps like this and there we go. Uh, now we want to divide the edges of this cylinder into a grid which we can use to place our spiral. So what you want to do is select this edge here, hold the control key, select this or not the edge, the surface I guess, uh, and then you want to go here to the form element. Here we have divide surface and you just click on that and it's going to create a division like this. Uh, now in the properties panel we have the U and V grid uh, and these two control that. Now I'm going to set both to fixed number uh, and the uh, U grid I'm just going to set that to 6 and then the V grid is going to be 3. Or three. So it looks like this. Now you might be thinking, well, it looks like it has been divided into six all around, uh, not only vertically. Uh, but the thing is, as you can see, we have two of these spheres. So each sphere is divided into three fields. And then because we have two, it means that we have uh, just six fields in total. Uh, now also to host our spiral we have to readjust these just a little bit uh, by going here to surface representation and we do have an option to turn on nodes. Now when I check nodes and click OK as you can see it's just going to add these little nodes and we can use those to host our uh, spiral which is quite cool. You want to do the same thing on the other side so select the kind of the, that uh, half cylinder face on the other side, go to surface representation, go to this little arrow, it says display properties, and then check nodes on. Uh, click OK. There we go. 
Okay, now it's time to create the actual spiral. So for the spiral, you uh, want to create that, as I said in the intro, you want to create that as a separate adaptive generic component. Uh, now to create a, a, an adaptive generic component, we have to go here to the file menu, we we'll go to new. Now that's modeled as a family, so that component is basically a Revit family. And for the template file, this is the crucial part, crucial step. Uh, you wanna scroll down to generic models and then go to adaptive. So this is the only uh, family template that's going to work for this type of a family. Uh, you simply click OK. It's going to start up the uh, kind of family or the adaptive family design environment, which looks exactly like the massing environment. So that's easy. It's kind of straightforward. And you want to go here to the uh, point element tool and just want to place some point elements. Now I'm going to place four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to be using seven because I want this spiral just to go all the way around this. So just kind of one spiral. Uh, if you want a more, uh, you would have to add obviously more points. Uh, here, we only need seven for this. Uh, now, once you have placed the points, select the points only, go here to adaptive component and make them adaptive. While they're still selected, you have the option to go here to the draw panel and just click on spline through points. And it's going to connect all of these with a spline. See, it's really cool. Uh, once we have that done, we just have to add a, a single profile, uh, which is going to give us kind of the, the, the thickness of our spiral element, so to speak. So for that, I'm just going to go here to set work plane, uh, pick this plane here. So it's the one that's kind of perpendicular to the uh, spline. So you want to click on that one. And then I'm just going to go to the circle tool. Uh, make sure that the draw on work plane is checked on. So that's the one that's kind of highlighted in blue, not this one, but this one. And then you just come in here and you create that circle. Uh, now for the circle, this is in millimeters. So we can just make it, I don't know, like, uh, well, let's go with 200 millimeters. And also you want to go to that dimension. See, we have this uh, little dimension uh, icon below. And when you hover over that, it says, make this temporary dimension permanent. So once we do that, it's a permanent dimension and it allows us to select that uh, diameter. And then it allows us to go here to label, create new parameter, and we can just call it the I don't know, the diameter, I, let's just call it DI for short, make it an instance parameter. Uh, this is something that I find really useful. And that's it. So here we have that diameter. Uh, finally, you want to select that circle, hold the control key, select the spline, and then go to create form. And it's just going to connect that spline all the way through and it has some thickness. And this is what we want to have. Uh, now, uh, the final step before loading this into the project is to save it. Uh, this is also quite crucial. Uh, if you don't save it, then you're going to have trouble updating it in the future. So <laughs> let's make sure to save it here. I, I'm just going to save it on my desktop uh, and let's call it the, uh, what's this? I don't know, the adaptive uh, spiral. Okay, I can go with that. Save that, and now we can load that into the project. Uh, now, once that's loaded into the project, it looks like this. Looks really odd, exactly what like we have created it. But don't worry about it. Uh, now, you want to go here to the first point. You click, then you go to the second point here. You click, then you want to kind of orbit around. Go to the third point, and as you can see, I'm just going to up slightly as I go around. I'm going up. So next point is this one. Next point is this one. This one is the next one. And I think we have just one more. Yeah, that's this one. And there we go. Hit the escape key a couple of times. And now you have your spiral. And as you can see, it's uh, perfectly following that cylinder shape that we have created. And that's how our spiral looks. Uh, now, Let's, let me try something. If I can only select the whole thing here, you probably have the ability to edit this. 
So you can uh, you can select the, the the spline, but you can also select the individual points. Now here, as you can see, they they are hosted. Uh, but if you were to make any changes to this, obviously the the spiral would change. And also you can select the the spiral itself. And then here we have the diameter parameter, and we can change that. So if I set this to forty, it's going to become thicker. And if I set that to twenty, it's going to become smaller, and so on. So there you go. That's how you create a spiral. It's not something fancy, uh, but it can get the job done if you need a spiral. Uh, obviously, it, you can use different hosts to host this. You can create different spirals. So I really like the, the 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 way that you have control over this when you use this adaptive component. You can control it through the shape. Uh, which is used as a host, so it doesn't just have to be like a cylinder. You don't have to use this just for spirals. You can do use this for all sorts of uh, unique three D shapes. So uh, that, that's that's the way that you can approach this. Okay, I, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new and interesting. Uh, as I said, if you're interested in a course on either adaptive components or a course on the massing environment, uh, both of those are available on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link in the description. And also I have uh, all of my Revit project files like this family and this project. So if you want to check that out, you can find that on my Patreon page. That's the second link in the description. Uh, make sure to um, like and share this video. It helps me out a lot, uh, helps promote the video to other people that might want to see it. Make sure to uh, comment if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. And I'll see you in a couple of days with a new tutorial. Have a nice day.